So the night before the live show in Salt Lake City this weekend, I'm chatting with a friend and the subject turns to tarot cards. It turns out that like me, she used to be a shut-eye tarot reader. That is a, a person who did cold reading without realizing that that's what they were doing. And I know that sounds like a bullshit post hoc excuse, right? Like, I was only accidentally using a well-known con to manipulate people. But it's actually a really easy thing to fall into, especially back in the pre-internet world where, you know, it's real easy to never come across the term cold reading in your whole fucking life. But of course, over time, it becomes more and more clear to you that what you're doing is less of a psychic act and more of a party trick. And if you're like me or her, you start to slowly realize the damage that it's doing as well. You can justify the deceptive nature of it at first by telling yourself that you're only giving good advice and you're just trying to help people. But if people think your good advice is coming from the astral fucking plane on divine authority, it ceases to be good. And if you're honest with yourself, you can't help but see the subtle damage that it's doing. And you can't help but confront the fact that it was always a way of elevating your opinions into celestial wisdom more than it was about helping anyone. And so if you're like me or if you're like my friend that I was chatting with, you walk away from it. But as we were talking, I started to wonder how different it might have been if we'd had the same social media structure then as we have now. Because it's not hard for me to imagine the 27-year-old version of Noah having a tarot-based YouTube channel or a, a podcast about woo or a blog about bullshit. And in that universe, one where I'm actually making my living off of believing that bullshit, would I have had the same revelation? I mean, I feel like I'm a pretty honest dude. So I, I feel like if I realized I was just straight up manipulating people, I'd stop even if it was, I was making a decent living at it. But I'm not as confident that I actually would realize that. The brain is amazing at swerving around realizations when its continued happiness depends on doing so. Right now, I, I can imagine a Christian listening to this and trying to apply it to my current situation, right? Like, here I am admitting that my objectivity can be clouded by my financial interests. So wouldn't that mean that if I came across convincing evidence of a God, my brain would swerve around it so that I could continue to make my living talking about atheism? And the short answer to that question is no. And, and not because I've gained some kind of superhuman rationality through the sheer potency of my non-belief, but because that's not how the financial incentives are aligned. Right? I, feel, I feel like we can all agree that I'd be making a hell of a lot more money tomorrow if I fucking found God. Ain't nobody ever made a billion dollars selling atheism, and prominent atheist finds Jesus is the kind of fantasy that they make movies about. Right? Like if, I, if I found God at this point in my life, David A.R. White would play me in a fucking movie. But if I was a woo peddler, ex-tarot reader finds a conscience, that's nowhere near as marketable. I mean, I've shown that I can build an audience from there, sure, but I can't sell y'all motherfuckers supplements, now can I? And you guys think I'm pretty cool and all, but that's nothing compared to the guru worship you get peddling bullshit. So would I have been able to back away from that lie? Would I have even been able to fully confront the extent to which I'd been full of shit? Because it's not just about your future income. It's also about continuing just to tell yourself that you didn't just rip off a fucking bunch of people who gave you money before as well. Think about how much harder it is to confront the truth when the truth is that you're a con artist. And of course, the punchline to this whole conversation, which neither of us realized as we were talking about this at the Platinum Night on Friday night, is that we were having that conversation in Salt Lake City. Two days after we talked about how hard it is to admit that a profitable endeavor is based on a lie, I walked by the goddamn Joseph Smith Memorial Building a 10-story concrete and steel behemoth surrounded by the most beautifully maintained floral display I've ever seen. And that was right next to the fucking Brigham Young Monument, a 25-foot-tall gilded fucking statue, a building dedicated to a serial rapist next to a statue dedicated to a serial killer. All at the heart of a bazillion-dollar church dedicated to never realizing that. And look, I'm not just trying to be euphemistic here because I recognize that there's a genuine difference between knowing you're wrong and avoiding the question of whether you're wrong in the first place. Religious people are taught to push those doubts away, right? That's Satan trying to intrude on your faith, after all. But even if they weren't, the internal inclination not to entertain any evidence that contradicts the things that you want to believe is powerful as all hell. Literally, I guess. And I think that understanding that and recognizing that and allowing for that is a key to having the kind of sympathy that we're going to need to change minds.